Hey everyone. Okay. I think uh, Tom gave my presentation already for me. <laughs> well, work here is done. Um, yeah, thank you everyone for being here. Um, if you saw any of my lectures er earlier today, um, thank you so much for not letting that deter you uh, from coming back. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I just started playing this video to give you guys something to look at, but this is kind of some, some of the stuff I do. Um, uh, ah, I can just let it play while I'm talking. Um, yeah, so earlier today, uh, for those of you who don't know, I gave lectures to both the drawing and design classes. Uh, the content was uh, rather technical. Um, however, tonight, I plan to give a much more um, uh, general type of presentation about um, my experiences in the, uh, uh, as a freelance illustrator and um, you know, by um, setting up a timeline of, I guess, what you'd call them milestones. And then um, hopefully give some advice to any aspiring students um, and that's about it. I'm not going <laughs> to. The trick is not to aim too high. Um, <laughs> I'll get carried away here. Uh, let's get this presentation started. OK. Full screen. So uh, this will be redundant, but um, I am the person whose name is on that screen. Um, you might also be surprised to know that I am the Kevin Tong in Kevin Tong illustration. Oh, that light, that light is hot. One second. You do not want to see a sweaty Kevin. Um, or maybe you do. I don't know. That costs, that costs, that costs extra. Uh, already it's going swimmingly. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I came here from Los Angeles, California. Um, I do uh, posters and prints for uh, films. Um, there's uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. There's, uh, and these are all official limited edition screen prints. I work with the directors um, and the studios um, on these and you know, we make um, our little deals and whatnot. Uh, so this is a poster for The Iron Giant, which is one of the finest movies ever made, period. Um, animated or not, just, it's just a great movie. Brad Bird directed that, uh, if you know him from Pixar fame. I um, also went along and, um, so a lot of the stuff I do is like, I guess it's kind of like memorabilia for, uh, for movies. And so this is like Psycho. I mean, obviously wasn't around for the release of Psycho. It's like, you know, it's moisturized a lot. Um, <laughs> It's like, huh, oh, I'm 70. Uh, and so, so a lot of these are throwbacks to older movies that I, I particularly, particularly like. Um, and the Psycho poster was part of a show I had recently uh, in March in Austin. Uh, it was all movie posters at the Mondo Gallery. Uh, I'll talk about that a little more later. Um, th this is um, a poster I did uh, for a movie screening that was happening a few years ago at an event in Austin, Texas called South by Southwest, the director, Edgar Wright, showed up in the town and four days before a screening and, and thought it'd be cool to have a poster. He went to Mondo, which is the agency that commissions a lot of these posters, saw the posters and said, you know, I want one of those too. And they didn't want to disappoint him, but they're like, four days is not a lot of time, Edgar, to get a poster done, like, period. And I happened to be there and I kind of had that, like, you know, it's one of those moments of like, like while they were talking, I just kind of started staring into space and was like, I'll do it, you know, and, and then they're like, what? And I was like, just, just quick, quick, agree to it like before like, I changed my mind. I, no clue how I was going to get it. This will play in later, but no clue how I was, how I was going to get it done. So I turned this poster around in 24 hours and um, sent the file off to the screen printers. Um, that's printing by hand, um, not like digital printing, printing analog by hand. So they printed it. Uh, in one day, they flew a guy from Seattle, that's where the printers were, uh, to Austin, Texas, like on a plane. The guy hands the package of posters, basically turns around, gets back on the flight home. And then so like three days after designing it, like I was just kind of like signing them. And I was like, that, I can't, that worked. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, and ever since then, um, 
you know, um, Edgar Wright has been, you know, very kind to me. Let's, like, he let me do uh, Scott Pilgrim uh, for my show in Austin. I've also done, uh, when World's End came out, you know, he asked for me by name to do a poster. Because um, I guess, you know, just kind of, just when you do stuff like that, people remember those things. Um, but uh, before all this movie stuff got started, I, uh, I started out doing posters and music. I've done posters for Fly of the Concords, um, uh, Washed Up. That's like a sign of a good, I'm like, I'll turn to read it. Like, what was that band? Oh, huh? Right, yeah. Um, so you might not want to pay attention to those lectures I gave earlier too much. The guy can't even read his own posters. Um, uh, you know, Appleseed cast and uh, Circus Survive. Uh, Tom mentioned New Girl. That's the poster. It's always in the background of New Girl for some odd reason. Because, you know, that, that wholesome friend group listens to um, Circus Survive, which is a very dark band. Um, and I do other stuff, believe it or not. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, like I can... I know jokes uh, now. Um, now I do like a lot of uh, like art prints. Like that Optimus Prime is very artistic. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> um, like no, those are my uh, the, like art that I do on my own. The, the, these two right here. Um, then I, I kind of keep like you know keep it. Uh, I, I've done toys in the past before, so kind of like to stick to my roots. Um, I did a poster for Scott Pilgrim, the comic book, when before the movie came out. And I've done a lot of posters for books. Like, this is a poster for Brave New World right here. And um, can you, are you guys able to see the cursor moving around? I can't, I can't exactly see it from this angle. Is it working out for you guys? Yeah. All right. Um, so um, I went to California State University, uh, Long Beach, where I got in, graduated in 2005. I got my bachelor in fine art uh, and emphasis in illustration. Um, it's a very good program. Um, even though I was studying illustration, they emphasized the importance of having a solid design knowledge that um, to this day I still continue to educate myself um, through like various inspirations and just meeting people, talking to people. Um, the first thing I, I did when um, I was a student, I started working when I was a student before I graduated. I started, uh, wrote and illustrated a children's book that was part of a competition that I, I won. It was called The Earth Machine. Um, that's the cover. I don't ever put the text on because they wouldn't let me do the, the design and I don't like the text they, they put on there. Um, these are some sample pages. And um, like, it was an open call co contest and I just submitted the work and, I, and it got accepted. And I was like, oh, I'm trying to finish up like a semester and write and illustrate a children's book on a deadline. It was. It was, a, it was, a, it was an interesting year. Um, and uh, so then I finished school, and I went and did uh, illustration, just whatever work I could get my hands on. I, I, uh, I don't want to say hoard myself out, but that's what I did. Um, <laughs> but I, I gave everything the old college try, so to speak, um, even though I wasn't in college anymore. Uh, like uh, I won um, this uh, at Threadless, I submitted a design. One, I did work for uh, apparel companies. So, um, the um, like the, this is uh, something that I'm going to be talking about is how things lead to other things. So, I saw like an open call submission contest for Threadless. Uh, it's a T-shirt company in Chicago that if you submit um, designs to them, they uh, if they pick your design, they'll pay you money, and you know you win, and you get promoted all over. And then um, I was able to work for other T-shirt companies, and I did other weird stuff like dental diagrams. Um, that was, you know, kind of people still can't believe I, I ever did that. Um, it's like, yeah, it was fun. They paid well, you know. I wouldn't want my dentist to not have diagrams. Um, it's like, you know, how does this work? And then you come out like missing teeth. Um, so. Um, so I was freelancing for a while, and that's what I always wanted to do. And um, then I went and got a job at this company called uh, Jack Pacific. It was in Malibu, and um, that was a full-time job with benefits. Uh, you know, I was uh, the medical coverage, even though I hated going to the doctor anyway. It was just good to know I had it. Um, so these are kind of the products that I designed. I did like branding. Um, I designed game controllers because what they did was they licensed properties and. Um, and um, they'd just be like, you know, we have Spider-Man, do something, Kevin. It's like, okay, you know, and then that's kind of what I did. 
I also did like technical turnaround uh, diagrams too um, for them, and that was pretty good. Um, I, but I, I started discovering something about myself uh, when I worked there, and like I said, everything seemed good. And my, you know, my, it was something that my family could understand, like you know, toys. Someone's got to draw them. Someone's got to design them, and I, I was finding that I wasn't uh, feeling um, uh, fulfilled in that job, and I'm not knocking jobs. I'm talking about like my, my own personal um, things, you know, my personality, and um, I just didn't feel like I was doing the best I could be doing, I guess is to say. Um, not that I was missing my calling, I, you know, uh, I'm just gonna keep contradicting myself, but <laughs> you know, I just don't want anyone to think that that's not like, I didn't have a good time there, I did. But I guess, you know, sometimes it's time to move on. So um, I, kept, uh, <laughs> I kept the inspiration going by going to like, events like Comic-Con um, to get like, you know, motivation and, whoa, how did that get in there? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> um, ignore that. Uh, better, better check it out one more time. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, Comic-Con was fun for inspiration, um, you know, and uh, purely educational values at Comic-Con. Um, and it was there that I started running into the people that I would kind of, you know, that, um, that I would kind of morph into, like, you know, uh, years later. Um, uh, and <laughs> so uh, I met, um, met, uh, Oh, those, those girls were nice. The blonde one cried a lot. Um, and uh, and um, I hope don't throw things at me. Uh, like, I always kind of, when I, I've done these, this isn't my first rodeo, and I always kind of envision like from The Simpsons, like uh, when Bart has to go to like Catholic school, and then like it just cuts to like a scene of uh, like the outside of the school, and it shows him running, and then everyone's chasing him, and then the teacher's like, you know, avert your eyes, children, he may take on many forms. Like, <laughs> I'm always like prepared for that to happen. Like, got my running shoes on. <laughs> like, you know, like, like I don't know. You guys produce pitchforks and torches out of nowhere. <laughs> Get him. Uh, so, um, so it was there that I started seeing, I guess, like the the prototypes of the person that I would become now. Um, poster artists. It was cool. They had booths there, and they were just being themselves. You know, you know, just. I was like, one guy was like totally drunk at his own booth. Um, I thought that was awesome. Uh, like, and uh, you know, and, but the thing that was that I, that I realized was that um, that uh, they like he had a booth with a banner that had his name on it, and people came to see him and associate the work that he done that or that he done that he he done did uh, uh, proportion uh, to him. Whereas I guess I felt, I guess that's what I think, the thing was with Jack Specific is I was working hard, I was doing great work, but it never came back to me. The person accepting the award at the toy fairs for the work that we all did was the person that we never met. Like, you know, vice presidents and, and such, you know, which is, I guess, how do these things get going? But, you know, I wanted something else. So I started doing band posters, and this is the first poster I did back in um, 2007. Uh, for a band called Built the Spill, and I was still working at the toy job, so um, money wasn't really a factor. There's guys that were doing this for a living, so me, I just kind of like trounced in, and I was just like, uh, "Hey, Built the Spill, I'll do a poster." And it's like, you know, what? Uh, yeah, what kind of deal can you offer us? And I was like, "I just want tickets to the show," you know. Um, and then they're like, uh, "Yeah, go for it." And and so I would go to the shows, and I would, um, you know, show up with a poster. Um, I would give them copies of the poster, and then I would just, you know, show up to the show and have one for myself. And be like, hey, you know, Built Spill, can you guys sign it? And like, uh, yeah, Kevin. And something started happening, and this is this is what started becoming the game changer. Was um, I, so I have the poster, and the band would sign it, and be like, hey, man, pretty cool stuff. You know, we'd like you to do another show, or like, you know, I run another band, or I manage this other thing. And other people at the show started being like, like, yo, yo, fool, that poster's sick. I want one. And eventually, uh, they started, uh, like, it started happening where I couldn't get, because then I started doing other bands. Like, my second poster ever was for the Shins. Because, um, again, I had nothing to lose. So I was like, hey, Shins, you know, let me do a poster. And 
after, and then um, that led to other, doing stuff for other bands like um, Rilo Kylie. And I couldn't even make it to the door without people being like, you know, uh, like 40 people would be like, I'll give you like $50 for that poster. I want one. Where can I get one? And then, so I was thinking, like, I got the job. I don't, I don't you know, I don't need to, you know, deal, deal with this money. Like, whoa, wait a second. That's, 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 uh, that's, 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 an, that's an amount of money that I could be earning. Um, and so while I was, so uh, I started working out the deals where I could sell the posters to fans directly, either at the show or have them on a website um, that I would then um, pass the information to them along the people. And I was still working at my job at the time, but like I was, you know, taking like I used up all my like sick days to work on posters. Uh, I was working like like in in bathroom stalls on like, rough sketches, you know, to send to bands. And the posters were showing. I was having them mailed because I lived in like a neighborhood in L.A. where you just don't want packages delivered to. So I was having them sent to work. And it's like, you know, it's like a, a little boy at Christmas. Like, I just want to like, tear it open. And so everyone at work would just kind of like, you know, um, like orbit like the posters and like, wow, you know, looking at them. And, and uh, yeah, so it, it started becoming a problem. <laughs> and uh, eventually um, I quit uh, the job and I started printing the posters with my friend uh, Danny in a, a small room that we repurposed as a drum shed. Like, from where he's standing, if he took he took those photos, he's like backed into the corner. That's that's it. Like there's no other room for him to stand back and take photos. Um, and that's me printing um, a poster I did for Mogwai, uh, and it would just it was you know those hot like L.A. days. It was just small room, two guys sweating in there. Once uh, a raccoon crawled in there and died, and we didn't know about it. <laughs> like we were just like printing the posters, and the poster had images of raccoons on it, um, and so. <laughs> And we're like, wow, what's that awful smell? Like, I was like, dude, just take that outside, you know? And he's like, no, it's not me. We thought, like, I was like, did you leave a sandwich in here? And it wasn't until we were done that we went to, to get the cleaning supplies. I was like, oh my gosh, a raccoon got, got into the Windex. Like, you know? <laughs> and, and so uh, we would joke that, like, you know, when I was selling the posters at, at the show, it was for a band called Tapes and Tapes. Like, people were like, hey, man, what can you tell me about this poster? It has bits of real raccoon in it. <laughs> um, you know? And uh, as well as, uh, 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 human sadness and misery, um, <laughs> s like sweated uh, into it too. Take your pick. You know, it's a cocktail of the of the human experience. Um, you know, enjoy. And it's like, hey, where are you going? Do you still want one? Come back. Um, <laughs> I like, I'll call. I'll, I'll, I'll call you. You know, um, yeah, I got to work on my salesmanship. But um, so uh, then, so I'm on my own. So I had, you know, I uh, work wise. So I started having some a lot more free time. So I started doing things that weren't necessarily like anything I was assigned to do. And um, a friend had this idea like about, I was like, what if uh, Leonardo da Vinci designed the iPhone? What would it look like? Because you know, he, he's famous for his sketchbooks, almost more so than his uh, paintings, you know, other than the uh, Mona Lisa, which everyone gloms on about. Um, and so, uh, so I did this one, and, and he set up the store, and uh, it and so I wasn't used to anything like selling out like really like crazy, like uh, something that happens a lot nowadays. Um, but uh, so I, put, I remember putting it up, on, up for sale online, going to bed, and then waking up to like and checking my email. And then like I was just drinking a coffee and I started choking on the coffee because it was just like page after page of sales. We didn't put any inventory control on it because we were just like, I don't know, like what, 10 people might buy one, you know? <laughs> And then, like, of those 10, somehow 11 will return one, you know? It's just, we'll have negative one sales mathematically. That's <laughs> possible, you know? Just aim low, you know? And, and so that, that floored me. And so we were just, like, like, rushing to, like, ship these out as fast as possible. Because, um, yeah, it got picked up on Gizmodo, and it got all these digs. It just kind of went viral before that was even really a term. You know, just everyone was like, I have to have one. Um, and uh, this is all, like, 2008, 2000 nine maybe and it just led to like sales um, uh, it just looked like and uh, that's actually a photo at the time as I was, I was looking for photos to put together I was kind of like wow I can't believe all this stuff got documented like I don't even I don't even remember who took that photo but like um, yeah so uh, when other stuff does well then other things that were on like my online store would sell well so I found myself like just you know just working as fast as I could to replace things because um, the thing is, these are all limited edition. So once they sell out, 
ethically, you're not supposed to put one out, um, or you're not supposed to re-release it again. And I, to this day, I have never uh, done that. Um, despite the, you know, I get lots of emails about certain posters and all. Um, so the next thing for us to do, that's Danny uh, right there, um, was just to take our, our little show on the road. Um, uh, he was my partner in the sense that he was helping print these things, um, but you know, since now he's gone on to start his own uh, business, and he's like probably, in my opinion, the finest printer in the world right now, and I've worked with quite a few. Um, um, uh, yeah, so this is um, the first event I ever sold posters at called Flatstock in um, Austin, Texas, a city I would come to visit again and again and recently have a show later on. Um, so went there, sold the posters, and look at this setup. Like, it's like the cardboard's not even straight. There's posters on the floor. <laughs> like, we showed up and we're like, maybe we should tell, tell people we accept credit card. How we accepted credit card was you would go, uh, you would log into your PayPal account on my laptop <laughs> and <laughs> send me the payment and then log out, because that's not sketchy, you know? Uh, <laughs> like, you, you can trust this face. Uh, Things haven't changed much. Um, but yeah, I started doing, um, and that was like, like crack for the, creati like the creative soul, because I just, I was meeting people, and there's all these other creative people just talking, because I mean, look, look at all the other posters. Like this is like, it's like a Costco-sized building, just full of uh, rock poster, um, music poster artists. And they do these events all over the country and world, internationally. So I started doing like so many to the point where like <laughs> like like we're, we're in the same hotel. And my friend's like, "Oh my God, I have a Polaroid of you sitting." I guess they're all photo. Very, everyone takes photos, you know. Um, and it's like, wow, this is <laughs> like reminds me of last year um, working in hotel rooms because like you know we're just I mean we're all like you know 23, 24, so we're just like you know just just you know we're running ourselves ragged and then asking for more. Nowadays, I just cringe thinking about it. Um, and so yeah, I started doing events in Chicago. And, um, and the events were great. Um, I started uh, selling lots of posters. So all these, those are all posters on the back. And, and then it would just sell out, like, you know, just standing there. So my friend Chris is like, you know, hey, good job, you bastard. You know? <laughs> and, and I'm just like standing there like, I'm so satisfied with myself. You know? It's like, what, will I, what shall I do with my time? You know? And um, yeah, you know, I, I, I get a little choked up when I think about those days. It, was, it felt like a long time ago, and it, wasn't, it was only a few years ago. Um, and uh, so, but the thing is, at those events now, when people are meeting you in person, that's, that leaves like an indelible uh, effect upon that person versus just viewing your work on a website or taking a business card from you. Uh, I mean, there's value in that. I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying that when people get to talk to you and ask you questions, they don't tell me who they are. Like, you know, and I'm glad they don't, because then that would change my approach. Like, I'm the art director of Hard Rock Cafe or something. It's like, you no, know, they just talk to you and ask you questions, and I don't know who they are. But then, like, years later, or maybe even shortly after the show, they'll commission me for work. So I started getting bigger clients. Like, you know, the, my days of dental illustration were over. Um, <laughs> I started doing, like, you know, um, stuff for Hard Rock Cafe and BF Goodrich. Um, I guess they have this like race like in California called the Baja uh, 3000 or something like that. Um, and yeah, it was pretty good. Um, hmm? oh. uh, uh, another big milestone that's, because at this point I was not sure if I was going to be doing posters, like if it was like a, like a passing uh, thing, like, you know, that's like, oh, it's just a phase Kevin's going through. He'll grow out of it. And what locked it in, because posters weren't really a phenomenon. It was just kind of like a thing that a few people collected. And then I got involved with um, the TV show Lost. Um, and like these are all things, like, I, like it sounds like it was all this like, you know, meticulous like, like Joker plan, like you know, Dark Knight. Like, you know, but no, it's all just kind of stuff that I just stuck to what I liked doing, things that I enjoyed and did the best I could at them. And, um, and it just, one thing just kept leading to another. I could never have planned any of this. No, and I never expected it to happen. Um, so this is a poster I did for Lost, um, and that went viral like worldwide. People were buying these for like two hundred dollars each, um, and they were selling out in like minutes. Like it was, it was insane. It was a series 
that um, later, uh, like that, a lot of people that would I would now call my friends. It's kind of what brought a lot of us together. And so, like I said, these are all limited editions. So once they were gone, they wanted more, and it just uh, it just kept going. And um, I even like you know I started doing shirts uh, or illustrations for um, Chuck Palahniuk, the, the author of Fight Club. He has like quite uh, like he has five thousand subscribers to his online five hundred thousand um, subscribers to his online online like writing workshops, and uh, he, his team saw me at a Renegade uh, that's a uh, an event in L.A. Renegade Craft Fair, and they were, they asked if I could do a shirt. I did the shirt and I was like you know I think I can turn that into a poster, and it just led to like four solid designs, all of them selling out. His fans are very devoted. Um, there's a Fight Club, Invisible Monsters, Choke, and Rant. Um, all these were t-shirt poster combos. And so, but uh, I kept on doing, because th like, as I was doing um, all this work, the, the bands started um, getting more noticed. Like indie bands started being something that could possibly win Grammys. It went, it went from like being like, you know, uh, like something that was just in a garage, you know, where it's like, you know, five like guys with the same haircut, you know, now it's just like, uh, you know, big deal. So I started doing repeat uh, posters, which is pretty rare. Usually like they just kind of work with whoever's available. Um, whereas bands were coming back and asking me. So I started doing, I did four posters for the Black Keys. Um, that's, uh, what's that one? ACL, um, uh, Austin City Limits, a show, a random show in Canada, Edmonton, I believe. Um, Coachella, the music festival, and um, Lollapalooza. That was in Chicago, so I did a take on Wayne's World, like Black Keys World, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, I was like, you know, part, like, par party on um, Dan, party on Pat, their names. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, I started doing work with Bon Iver, and um, a lot of these bands, like, like both the Black Keys and Bon, and bon Iver, they fill arenas. Well, not anymore, but when at their heyday they were. They weren't that... They weren't like, you know, uh, Black Keys still, but they weren't like as, like, when I was working for them, they weren't as big a deal. So I'd, I, I'd venture to say that some of my contemporaries we wouldn't take them very seriously. Like, oh, well, they're not Radiohead or something, so I'm just going to do a half ass job. Whereas I was like, oh, you know, it's a client's a client. You know, I've agreed to do the job. I'll do the job that, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're going to have me do. And again, it wasn't like, it wasn't me like, you know, sycophantically, like, oh, and then they'll get big and take me with them. But they did. That's exactly what ended up happening with these bands. They were, people remember stuff like that, you know. Um, you can schmooze, like, all you want, but, you know, people, you know, people remember, uh, remember stuff, and that's how you can stand out. That's how, you know, the best way to get work is to just do good work. Um, and... Um, I've done three posters for Mogwai that were really well received by um, poster fans. Um, and so, at around this time, like 2010, that's when I was like, yeah, I, I think I want to do posters for a while. And I was like, yeah, so I'm a poster artist. And then I was like, no, I don't want to be a poster artist anymore because it started getting, like, it started getting, like, kind of controlling, like, the band poster scene when, like, you know, it just became less fun, more about, like, how can we maximize, like, a deal as much as possible. Bands started art directing more, and then, you know, it was hard to compete with, um, uh, like all these like you know fresh faced designers that would be like, I'll do it for free, like like I was, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I probably put like a lot of the older guys out of business with my antics, like hey shins, you know, screw that guy, you know, and you know I'll do it for free. <laughs> so you know you live and learn, but you know it's it comes around, you know, so it happened to me. I got kind of uh, bitted out of some of my. Um, regular poster work, and it's fine, you know. Um, it's like a it's like a relay um, race where you pass that stick around. I guess if you just view it that way, you know, it's not something for anyone to hold on to for too long. Um, so I kept doing the events um, when I was. So that's like a, um, an early example when I first started. I had a suitcase that I was tying together with bungee cords and it was like exploding everywhere, and I was losing like merchandise. <laughs> And you know, down the line, I managed to upgrade to like custom flight cases I had made specifically for my posters, um, like on like wheels, and they they could strap together. Um, and so I was like, you know, doing events and like hiring people to come with me um, to, to help sell um, stuff. Um, oh, those, those are my cases um, uh, on the train 
I went, I went to, um, where was I? I was trained, London, yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, good, strong flight cases I could take all over the world. So, you know, things started looking up, um, despite, like, some, you know, um, awkwardly clumsy... Uh, I remember when I first did an event in Chicago, I, um, I, I didn't realize there were so many toll booths there, and so I got off the airport, got my rental car, and I didn't, and the toll booth, uh, I, had all, I had money to make, you know, change, like, small bills, but they only took coins, and there was no way to get out. You couldn't back out of there, and there were cars, like, coming through, like, at, like, you know, 60, 80 miles an hour, and I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation, because I have no way of getting through. I mean, you know, the, it's a rental car. There's no coins in the ashtray. So I remember, like, like having to, like, to, like, get out of the car, like, in traffic, and, like, when no, no cars would come, like, run out and, like, just grab coins that were on the ground. <laughs> and then, like, like, oh, like, oh, shit, oh, shit, like, you know, there, there's, there's, there, like, there's a car, and then it's, like, honking guys, like, get out of the way, you idiot. And I was by myself with, like, posters and cases and stuff, and, um, and, uh, so I, I, I fed the, the, the thing, and I was like, oh, I've got, I've got an extra 35 cents. So, you know, the first, uh, made money already, you know? <laughs> so, you know, if you keep a positive attitude, you know, it'll carry you through. Uh, yeah, there's all sorts of uh, crazy adventures, like um, getting lost on like the subway in New York and ending up in a very, very bad part of town with all my, the money I'd earned that day, a uh, bag of comic books in one hand that I bought at a, a store and another bag like full of like Whole Foods that I was gonna like make dinner later. And, uh, and then so I asked a guy, and he said, oh, you're gonna have to walk clear across town because they shut down the subway. And uh, so I'm walking clear across town to make it to like another like subway thing. And everyone was like interested in like what I was doing. Like, hey man, what's going on? And like, it was terrifying. And then I realized it's like, actually, I perceived it as terrifying. Everyone was just really friendly. Like, where'd you get that watch from? I'm like, oh God. And it's like, <laughs> like, like it's like, you know, it's like, and I'm like, here, here it comes. And I'm like already like taking it off to hand it to him. And it's like, I'm like, I got it on Amazon. Okay, sweet, I'll check it out. And like, like they were just, they were just nice in the most terrifying way. So, you know, like, you know, that kind of like helped shape my uh, development um, in like, you know, as an adult, like kind of, you know, you know, not letting like, you know, not perceiving things or not letting the common perception like be like a shackle, like, you know, kind of to assess things as they come and not assign hard values that I won't budge out of them. And uh, it really helped to be flexible in that way. Um, it wasn't that one event, it was like many events. It wasn't like, and then I became a changed person, you know? Um, no, I was still stupid. Uh, so, uh, that was like, you know, so like I said, my, my setups went from like being really ragged, like those binder clips and it's like cardboard taped to a wall. And it's like, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm at an event, you know? And then, and so it's like, and then, like, bam, babes, come into the booth, you know? <laughs> I was going through images, and I was like, there's a lot of fan pictures at the booth, and a lot of them are, like, like guys wearing, like, you know, like, Archangel t-shirts or, like, you know, Lamb of God, like, death metal shirts, and I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to stick with this one. <laughs> but I, I, I thought it was kind of funny, because it's like, you know, it's like those, like, before and after, like, ads, like, like you know, like, the, the, the Bosley hair loss experiment, or like hair loss treatment saved my marriage. It can save yours, too. Like, before and after. <laughs> like, like if, if it can work for me, it can work for you. It really works. Like, you know, like, late at night. <laughs> so, and so, yeah, if you follow everything I've been saying, it, it can work for you. It worked for me. Uh, and, no, but that's, so, so now, like, that's, like, that's kind of what my booth looks like more now, like, at Comic-Con. So, you know, things, um, like, again, not assigning, like, value, like, even though, like, some events where I'm like, oh, man, the tape, and then this was in San Francisco, so the wall kept sweating, like, moisture, and so the wall would, like, my, the tape would just, like, lose adhesion, and I had to keep, like, like putting, post it was like whack-a-mole with, like, posters, you know, <laughs> and, like, like, it got to the point where, like, I could, like, kind of, like, like, like a bat, like, echolocate which poster was falling while I was talking to someone, so it was like, Poof, like that, I'm, like, stop it, you know? <laughs> And, uh, you know, I never let that get me down. I was always kind of like, well, learn from, learn from the next time um, to bring, like a, a, like, a mason, like, drill and bore into, the, the, into the, the, the masonry and then blame it on the guy next to me. It's like, I tried to stop him, you know. Uh, yeah, I guess he'll have to, to pay for the repairs and then, like, like quickly make my, ex my, my exit. Um, and so um, you know, I, I started figuring things out, learning from things, and... You know, um, I was just patient, you know. 
Um, and uh, eventually, um, we had a documentary um, made about us. It's on Netflix called Just Like Being There. So that's at another um, poster selling event. That's um, some of you guys might know who Jay Ryan is. That's my friend Daniel Danger. And so they're just following us around, making a documentary about, like, again, guys like us who are just like, you know, like getting lost in New York and as if we had like a, like a plan. They're just like, w like, what was your design with this this thing? And it was like I was just trying to, you know, not starve that week. <laughs> and, um, so um, I want I kind of wanted to give um, some advice um, to because I know there's a, a, well, quite a few people in this room who might want to become. Uh, self-employed um, illustrators or designers and um, I always feel like when you ask for advice everyone gives like this very like vague like Yoda sage advice like you have to believe in yourself you know uh, and you know it's what, whatever but so I'll give some specific advice too but uh, what I found was a lot of my classmates they let fear fear they let fear stop them the, excuse, the, the excuses were different, but they are always rooted in the same thing. Um, it's like, hey man, have you uh, shopped your portfolio around? I'm still putting it together. Um, have you gotten business cards made? I haven't found a, a good printer yet. And it's like, there's people that make business cards for free. I don't know how they stay in business. Like Flickr, you can make them for free. And the thing is, that, and then like, or like, I don't meet the qualifications. I looked at the video game job and they said you need five years experience. Uh, I, had, I, wasn't, I was fresh out of school and I worked for um, a publicly traded multi-billion dollar toy company. I had my own office. Um, had I stayed longer, I would have gotten stock options, 401k, um, all that. Like, I think they, they just say that stuff. They put up the, the screen like that so that just not, no, not like every Wahoo who's like, you know, I've drawn before, like walks into the, like, the thing. You know, they just wanna, they want serious applicants only, but th there's no rules for this. Um, I, uh, like, and the thing is, like in other lines of work, there are like you know you don't want your doctor to be someone who's just gung ho who just like bypassed medical school. You know that's a thing. Yes, you should probably follow the rules. Like he's like you know man, I just believed in myself as he's like <laughs> like 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 cutting you, and it's like you know I just knew I could do it, and I didn't need school to hold me down. You know, and you know I know they want you to like do get your doctor, but you know I just said you know f that you know, and <laughs> and like he's like can can I can I uh, have another doctor? No man, you're on a PPO or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so, yes, yeah, so um, if you're seeking a job in the creative field, this is a chance where there aren't really any hard set rules. Ultimately, they're going to judge you um, by your work. First and foremost, that's, the only, that's what they're going to look at. And then if you get called in for an interview, like, you don't have to like, um, uh, like convince them of your qualifications. They only call you in for an interview if they think you're qualified. They just want to make sure you're not like, a, like an a-hole or something, you know? And so they're sitting there, or like, you know, you show up and then, like, you know, I don't know, you're like really racist or something. And it's just like, oh, we should have interviewed that guy on a personal level before he came to work for us. We just hired him based on his merit as a designer. So that's what that's all about, you know? And, um, and uh, I, like, I'm very happy with what I'm doing right now. Could I be making more money? Sure, probably, you know? But I'm really, I'm really happy because I do the things I want to do. I set my own schedule. And to me, that's. I can say, like, you know, without any sense of, without any real ego, I, I am kind of a narcissist, but um, uh, that, you know, I've made it. Um, and the things that, um, that got me, uh, that, you know, now in retrospect were, um, were, um, lost my train of thought, uh, were like doing stuff like, you know, um, like just doing things I wasn't sure I could, I could do, uh, like the 24-hour Edgar Wright poster, um, putting myself out there at the events. Um, whenever I got like poster jobs for bands that weren't that, you know, just treating it the same. Um, I recently did a poster for the movie Gravity. And at the time when I was um, being presented with movies I could do, there are other things on the table like Thor 2 that were like, you know, proven blockbusters. And uh, it's not that I didn't want to do Thor 2, it was just like I was always into uh, outer space. And actually how they recommended that one to me was I've, I asked my, he's not really my manager, he's more like my friend who just prevents me from doing stupid things um, business-wise. Um, I asked him like, because I saw this documentary on um, Vimeo, it was a 20 minute documentary that was being like, you know, it was like being uh, personally funded by these guys who had a vested interest in 
um, space, and they wanted to talk to astronauts about their personal experiences upon viewing the Earth from the first time. And I just thought that was so cool, because the astronauts were talking, and it wasn't technical, it was all very emotional and personal. And I asked my, uh, I asked Mitch, I don't want to call him Andrew, but I asked my friend Mitch, I was like, hey, if you can hook me up with these guys and work out a deal, uh, you know, I know they don't, have, they don't have a lot of money, I'll just, I'll just do it. Um, and so I did that poster, and you know, it and um, you know, it didn't really go anywhere. But like, you know, we just wanted to raise awareness for the movie, and get more more views on Vimeo. And so, based on that, you know, Mitch, when he came across Gravity, he was like, "This is something Kevin's gonna be gonna be interested in." Now, if if, I, if all I cared about was money, and it might never have asked to do that um, documentary poster. It was called Overview, by the way. The documentary you can still watch it on Vimeo in its entirety. Um, and so, you know, Mitch would tell me later, he's like, yeah, you know, I was, just, I was, really, I was really touched by how you wanted to just do something, even though I knew you were busy at the time, for something that you felt personally was important to you. And so, you know, Gravity came along, and, you know, I know lots of guys that can draw posters, but, you know, I just wanted to give you first shot at it. And then so I was like, oh, thanks, Mitch. And it wasn't a big deal at the time. It was, it was still a film that no one had heard of. Um, and I just remember I liked the director. I was like, I love children and men. So I was like, yeah, love children and men, love space. What can go wrong? So I volunteered. I was like, oh, you know, sign me up. So I did the Gravity poster. It got approved. And, um, uh, and then that movie just exploded. Like it became like the Oscar, like golden child. And um, because I chose to do that movie, now I'm doing the official soundtrack. That's pretty cool. Like, you know, the packaging for the vinyl. So again, it's just like, like, it's not like something I wormed my, my way into. I wasn't at a party and it's just like, like, hey, you know, you know the thing, nice tie, you know, just, again, I was just, you know, just being myself as much as I could, you know, I mean, and I want to like do that like thing where it's like, you know, just be yourself. No, there's times when you should kind of reel that back, you know, <laughs> um, but don't be afraid. Um, don't ever feel like you're underqualified. If you're passionate about the line of work that you want to get into, that really is your best qualification. That is the sort of thing that really will carry you through a career that you want to last longer than a few years to be self-employed. Because when you're self-employed, everything reflects on you as a person. And, you know, if, if that's all I can say, that's, uh, that's all I can say about that. But, you know, I, I'd like to open it up now to any um, questions or discussions that anyone wants to have. Uh, if I've uh, said anything that you guys will, hey, elaborate on more or whatever. Yes? Have you kept a copy of every poster you've ever made? Um, there's a few that I haven't, um, like, because, you know, my, my accounting skills are lack, less, they're non existent. So it's like, and so, like, you know, it's like you sell a bunch and then it's like, oh man, I don't have any left. But now I, I'm very good about that. Yeah, I try to keep at least like a handful on me at all times. Yeah. Or, um, I mean, I'll never let that amount sell out. Are there any uh, movies that you really want to do in the future for a poster? Yeah. Um, I'd love to do a poster for uh, Blade Runner. Um, Love to do a poster for any Christopher Nolan films, you know, like um, Inception and the Dark Knight films. Um, uh, hell, uh, heck, even Memento. Uh, um, a lot of these uh, are either they're un they're unreachable, like those that the the owners don't want to do like business, uh, or uh, or uh, just not the timing's not right, or like Blade Runner, such a holy grail, you kind of don't want to like you know you don't want to be the guy that jacks it up. <laughs> It's like, you know, it's almost better to have it as a dream, you know? It's like, you know, it's like, she will be mine, like, you know, Wayne's World. Like, you know, like, just, just sit there and look at it and admire it for the idea. Yeah. Um, I can't really see too, uh, too much because the lights are bright, so just, just yell stuff out, you know? I'm not going to, I'm not going to think it discourteous. I saw you were using a, a drawing pad for the computer. Um, could you talk about your workflow and your yeah, um, I don't have any of that stuff uh, on me, but um, um, let's see, I'll just describe. Uh, I like to draw whenever possible, like draw traditionally. That's not always possible, uh, deadlines um, or just the style that I'm going for. But um, so I like to use uh, 
um, uh, hot press uh, Bristol board because I like to ink on it. Um, uh, I use um, Le Pen, like a French company. Um, felt liners, um, br brushes, I don't really discriminate too much. I just kind of buy whatever is like, you know, uh, just grab, you know. And um, like inking a lot. Uh, computer wise, um, you know, if it ain't Mac, it's whack. Use all Mac, you know. Um, <laughs> Like, uh, um, so uh, this isn't my working computer. It's my travel computer at home. I use an iMac. I'm the new, the newer model. Um, I, I, the the photo you saw was from a few years ago. I don't use like a, a a tablet where you're drawing here and looking on like here. Now I, I draw directly onto the monitor. I have um, um, everyone uh, everyone knows what the Cintiq is. But um, the Cintiq's kind of uh, expensive and unwieldy. I prefer this other company that's made by this, uh, or um, it's a Russian company. They're called Yenova. Um, quite good, Y-I-Y-N-O-V-A. Um, most of my digital work is done in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. However, I'm experimenting with Manga Studio right now. I was turned off by it because it's like, I don't want to draw manga. But it's like, actually, you don't have to draw manga with it. That's just what they call it, you know? It's actually quite a good program. Um, I'm just like staring into a tunnel of light, so you know, I'll head toward it. What kind of movies are you working on right now? Um, I'm not. Uh, I'm not supposed to talk about them for uh, because, like, things change. Things get canceled all the time, and um, or like I've done like whole posters and have never seen the light of day, so um, you know they kind of just prefer I don't talk about it, uh, especially to like you know. Tons of people, um, but um, yeah, I'm always working on movie posters, and I'm really excited about the stuff I'm doing now. What so. is this your oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, when you put it that way. <laughs> How many are your editions? How many? Your editions? Oh. Like, with the limited edition, pump, what number is that? That's a number that varies wildly. Um, for bands I've done posters for, like the Black Keys and Fish, they'll get like a thousand posters printed, and uh, and then they sell them all before the the band even hits a single note. So like like wow, you made like you know fifty thousand dollars before even like you know t like doing the mic check. You know, that's crazy. Uh, you know, I don't get that money. Um, um, uh, movie posters usually run in like the two to four hundred uh, range. It just depends on what the movie is, when they're releasing it. Because they'll release them at events sometimes. Like at, at Comic Con, all editions get doubled. You know, um, if it's just being released online, uh, anything it could go either way. Wild card. Um, two of my friends have done timed editions. Uh, uh, my friend Ollie did a timed edition for um, Dark Knight Rises, and they ended up selling ten thousand of them. That means they sold it for twenty four hours. So the edition was whoever buys it within this time period. So they ended up printing ten thousand posters. Um, uh, they did a Man of Steel one with uh, my friend Martin, and he did. Uh, they ended up selling like 5,800. So these numbers can get really high sometimes. Mine, mine have never exceeded much more than, I think, 1,600. Yeah. Um, I use um, multiple printers. The one that I use the most is uh, DNL. They're in Seattle. Oh. Um, he, he's very, uh, he's very um, uh, informal, like he doesn't have any kind of presence. His entire business is word of mouth, but you can look him up. He has a Tumblr um, that he never updates. Uh, <laughs> um, he goes by O'Danielson. His name's Danny Ascar, like, like as in Karate Kid, like you know, O'Danielson. But um, like again, like he, he, like he takes jobs like through friends of friends. So you know, just be like, you know, hey, Kevin said it was all cool. You know? And it's like, oh, you talked to Kevin? Yeah, you know. Um, there's screen printers all over. Um, there, here's a good resource for screen printing. They're all over. There's only like there's a few that are like big time, but like they're they're a lot. They're all over the place. Um, oh, what's it called? Uh, uh, Inker, linker, like ink is in ink, drawing ink. Inker, linker, like link is in like sausage links. Um, and uh, you know, my my analogies, you know. Uh, and that's like the yellow pages of printers. And you can look up um, digital printing, screen printing, 
letterpress offset lithography and they have it divided into sections. You can look it up by geographic region so you can find printers that live near you. But um, we're all, I mean, all printers are willing to ship prints, so you can work with a printer anywhere, really. You know. Oh, yeah. Um, it, gets, it, get, it can get pretty crazy. Like, um, I've got, have, I had, like, um, my lost print has maintained its, the, the print I showed you earlier. As uh, it's, it holds at around 300. Um, some, I mean, some posters go for like 10 grand. Like um, uh, Laurent Duro did a Jaws poster, and it wasn't that long ago, and it's, it's like going for like 10 grand in some cases. So I'm not trying to impress you with my numbers. It gets much bigger. Um, uh, I did an R2D2 poster. Let me see if I can find. Because rather than just talk about these things, I could show you them. Uh, where is that? Um, I did a RTD2 poster for Lucasfilm um, that uh, um, maintains, like, I think most of my stuff like floats at around like 300, 200. So, um, I mean, the original selling price is like, you know, for these things is like $50. So that's, you know, not, that's not a, not a bad appreciation, you know, considering that like a children's book that I illustrated out of college now, like you can get it on Amazon for one cent, you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's like it's not even advertised like uh, in the children's book section. It's like an advertised under like like kitchen like table mats, you know, <laughs> like or, like didn't like place settings, you know, <laughs> floor mats. Um, yeah. I mean, so I mean, this is all like, you know, um, that's what's crazy about it because there's no rules for this sort of thing. And just if a bunch of people want it, the price just kind of controls itself. I don't really have any say. There's no way to predict these things. Posters we thought were going to be like, like this is going to be the poster that's going to break a thousand on the secondary market, and then just like, like you know, somehow like when we sell it, we end up with more posters than we started with. It's like wow, it's negative sales, uh, insane. And then other posters which we didn't expect to ever make a dent. Um, like I did a, po a poster for Upstream Color, and that's a movie that no one's ever heard of. People loved it. It sold out so fast. I couldn't believe it. I just I was ready for it to not to hang around like online, and so I, I stopped trying to predict these things a while ago. Yeah. Let's see if I can dig up that Gravity poster. There it is. Hey. So um, yeah, I designed it so that it has no true up or down. Um, so there's credits like in both up, like I split up the credits in, in both the corners and, um, and the gravity repeats and let's see if we can zoom in on that. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of cool because like the movie is all about like a complete lack of orientation. So whenever I can, I try to like, you know, like work, the, work these little like things in and then like, you know, chuckle to myself like <laughs> gravity. <laughs> um, does anyone uh, have any other uh, like quite questions? Oh, um, yeah. There's n there's never like any like um, like answer that fits all of them. Sometimes I have um, other like uh, I had the chance to watch Pacific Rim um, before I did the poster. And uh, I didn't want to because it looked amazing based on the trailer. Like, I was like, wow, this is something that needs to be seen in the theater. And I didn't want my, because this is what uh, a screener of a movie is. They put you in an office. They, they, they pat you down for, like, phones and stuff. And then you sit on a laptop that's chained to a desk and you watch. And it has, like, all the USB ports, like, welded closed, you know. And has no internet connectivity. And you watch, like, <laughs> the movie on a laptop, you know. And... <laughs> And then you request assets, you know, stills from the movie, and they'll give it to you, and they'll put like a huge watermark, like, like Kevin Tong, like you know, like, like non or you know, it's confidential. And so, yeah, um, um, most of the time though, I don't get it. It's it can be brutal, you know. They just um, like bands. Bands can be that way too. They just they want you to do everything, yeah. and then just like, well, can you like you know, work with me a little bit? Nope, <laughs> you know, like like a woman. <laughs> Fellas, <laughs> fellas, am I right? <laughs> hey, high five, high five. Yeah, the, the guys know what I'm talking about. Da -dun I'm here all night. Um, <laughs> like a woman. <laughs> Classic. Uh, any other? Um, <laughs> 
companies are banned and then they sell it, or do you get a cut of each portfolio contractor? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll answer that question in regard to my, um, my practices as uh, Kevin Tong illustration. Uh, however, I, I don't discuss Mondo's or any of my clients' business practices publicly. That's because, you know, you know, as a professional courtesy. Me personally, uh, I don't have any rates. When people ask me for rates, I'm like, tell me about the work you want me to do. Because usually when someone asks you for a rate, like an agency or something, um, they, they, want to, they want to know what's the maximum amount of damage that they're going to sustain from working with you. So like, you know, well, oh, he demands like $80 an hour. That's manageable, you know? Um, so they're trying to figure that out. Mondo, we never work out the deal. We always, because like they know that, the, that these things tend to get out of control. Like it's like, yeah, Kevin, do you want to do a poster for, uh, for uh, Iron Man? It'll be easy. And then it's, it never is, you know? And it ends up like with me, like, you know, like, like bleeding from my eyes and it's like, Delivering, but like I love the spots, the spots of red. That's my blood. Somehow it got into the file, um, <laughs> and uh, and so they know that. And so uh, we always have uh, like a. Uh, I guess I am revealing their business practices in regard to me, but you know, um, they're willing to like you know work with me. Like afterwards, seem like yeah, that was a crazy job. Uh, here, have have some of these Doritos. You know, <laughs> like <laughs> like I, I didn't. I, this it's mostly crumbs, but there's a few whole chips in there. You know. Um, it's not it's not cool ranch. It's barbecue. No one likes it, but you know it's you know barbecue's better than no Doritos. <laughs> you know it's like I'm like gee thanks. You know and I'm like sucker. I'm like eating it. Um. Um, oh, that I had this illustration talent. Uh, I don't, my, my dad said I was always like um, drawing as a kid. Um, I was like, really dad? And he was like, oh yeah, my brand new coffee table, um, <laughs> on the hood of my car, um, on my face when I was sleeping, um, on the TV, um, you know. Um, I'd always been interested in, in, in drawing. Um, I think my dad wasn't surprised. Like the moment like he taught me to like, you know, use utensils, he's like, oh crap, he's grabbing, he's using his left hand to grab it, you know. He's like, he's like, oh boy, like dreams of like, like lawyer son, like just like fl flitting, like you know, rich, powerful lawyer son, like mm, I better focus on the other one. Um, and uh, and uh, um, no, 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 he 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 loved me with enough beers. Um, and uh, um, and um, it's like I love you, son. It's like I love you too, Dad. We're so wasted. Like, um, no, uh, um, but it wasn't until I attended, because I attended Cal State Long Beach with, um, with intentions to maybe do something else, like maybe engineering or physics, um, and then I quickly learned that was something that, because uh, like, you know, I'd go in there and be like, hey guys, we're getting physical, and they're like, no, we're not. We're here to study uh, physics, the understanding of the universe and our place within it. It's like, oh, okay, like you know, you guys are not cool. Um, <laughs> And engineering, you know, it's just like, like I can't believe you don't know what the square root of 256,892 is. Like I learned that when I was like 14. What's your IQ? Who sent you, you know? <laughs> it's like, and so like, whereas in the art world, it's like, man, I'm just, I've, I've smoked way too much weed to give a shit who you are. <laughs> like, and I'm like, like my people, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so, and so as a, you know, so in uh in, uh, in college is where I was like, I, I think I started considering art as a career, because I, I like doing it, but um, for some odd reason, like I guess like until it's presented to you, like you know, you see illustrations everywhere. I mean, say the average person is subjected to like 10,000 images per day, like if you live in a city, but then you just don't ever want, like it doesn't ever occur to you. It's like, well, the, like you know, there was a guy that, or a person that did that, it's not just like a hobby, and it's like, I could be that person. You know, so that's when I guess I realized I would do it professionally. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, um, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of just, I like drawing like with um, pencil and uh, pen, ink, brushes, like ink brush. I was never much into painting. Um, I liked, like, you know, I took painting classes. Um, but uh, I don't know, it just it seems like you had to wait too long for the results. Like, oh, I have to mix this, this color 
and then put it down, it's like, oh, it's not right. And you have to mix it and squeeze it out of the tube. And like, there were a few times in class where I almost drank my paint thinner, you know? <laughs> Thinking it was my coffee, you know? Uh, it's like, worst case scenario, like you fall on your pencil and it's like, well, I probably didn't need that kidney. Um, and, you know? Or it's like, like the, the paint thinner, that stays in you. And it's like, you know, like, like, like years later, like, you know, you're on a date kissing girls. Like, did you make out with like a paint, a house painter? Because you taste like paint thinner. It's like, still? <laughs> Like, I've been, I've been on the, cran the cranberry cleanse for like a decade. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, just something about pain, uh, painting that, yeah, I just didn't really, and for the life of myself, I can't control watercolor. I'm like, oh, it's, it's going everywhere, you know? I, I, I guess I like control. I like controlling the medium as much as possible. And pencil, it's like, once you put that sucker down, it don't, it don't go anywhere. Like, so you can't even really erase it all that much, you know? I like it, yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, well, I'm trying to, okay, the last, last poster I was working on when I was doing um, the Psycho poster, I remember I kind of was like, I don't really have any ideas because um, quite a few Psycho posters have been done. It's not a very long movie. There's only a few, like, profound moments that stick out in that movie, so it's not a whole lot of territory to work with, and I wanted to be different. And... So it was like this was kind of like a like a head scratcher. So I remember just walking around like the the the, the neighborhood and you know just uh, I'm like I, I send myself on like fake uh, errands like all the time. Like I'll I'll drive like two hours to get like a taco like in San Diego and then just like drive back. You know it's like oh I'm almost in Mexico. <laughs> like better head back. You know because like just something about like doing something menial uh, and then like yeah I'll go on like blogs. And uh, and um, like you know, like like you know, art and design blogs. I have books that I look at. So uh, there's never like one thing I go to. It's not always like you know, um, like that that, uh, that that Michelangelo. He's got all the ideas. It's all I need. You know, is my Michelangelo book. But it's from multiple sources. But I tend to find that um, activities that are where if I'm just like trying to think about it and throw like as much focus into it, that kind of doesn't work sometimes. It's kind of like half thinking about it, and like you know. Um, I remember uh, I was stuck on my Iron Giant poster for a long time, and so I, I was doing one of those things. I went to the to the um, uh, to a cafe that was a little bit out of my my way, and I was like sitting there and I didn't know what to do uh, for the poster. And I remember that the movie opens with a scene of Sputnik, and it's showing the transmissions as circles radiating from the center of the Sputnik as the source. And uh, I remember I was like, yeah, that was, that was a clever move because it showed like, a, like at the time, like the, the, the spreading, it represented the spreading fear of communism that was gripping that town and making them otherwise good people into irrational people. And I was like, that's kind of like what the, the Iron Giant represented. And then I was like, oh, and I thought about that thing. And then it's like, sir, sir, can I help you? And I was like, yeah. And like, like and I went back home and like started drawing it as fast as I could. So... Yeah, it's kind of how I come up with ideas. It's not like the greatest, but you know, it works. Um, no, no, that's a that's a good question. Um, I get asked that a lot. Uh, um, every poster is like as different as a fingerprint, so the amount of time that goes into it's very different. Um, so I know I know some people that a lot like like time like I'm gonna work like five hours on this phase and uh, if that works that's that's fantastic I like I'll if whatever whatever works to get things done but for me personally like you know, I was just so like you know not like a clocking in clocking out and it's like you know if you care about anything that you're doing like you're really gonna clock in and out like it's like like having sex with this girl, oh, it's been five minutes, you know, it's, a, it's, it's over, baby, you know, and then, no, like, just like, you know, just keep going until she's, like, dead. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hang on, I'm not finished, dead tired, you guys judged too soon, uh, so, so yeah, when it's something I care about, like, I kind of just, like, those, like, uh, 
uh, uh, the, like those, um, I really like Pixar films, so those Wally and Up posters, it's almost like however much time they'll give me. Like I could have done those like really quickly. I could have probably done them like, like I spent about 200 hours working on those because I just love the films and you know, I was in a position where I could just, you know, like work on them for that long. But then there's like an Edgar Wright poster, which, you know, I'm just as proud of having done. And he was like, you know, oh, I need it in 24 hours, Kevin. And it's like, oh, oh sure, yeah, you know. So I like to, to answer your question, I'll, I'll like a, it's like a, I'm like this, like, like as far as my time management, I'm like this like amorphous like thing that just takes whatever the container, the shape of the container that's in, so to speak, yeah. Oh. Thanks, guys.